It is 12.30 in the morning and I am dead tired, but I only have a few more 10 years later videos to film for the rest of 2021, and I'm gonna power through them. So, welcome back to 10 Years Later, the series where I talk about albums from the 2010s that were either impactful to me, impactful to music in general, very popular, or just worth revisiting 10 years later for good or bad reasons. And as you can tell from the title, the album that we'll be talking about today is the 2011 Marianas Trench record, Ever After. Marianas Trench, Canadian pop rock band, released this as their third studio album back in 2011. Previously, the group had formed all the way back in 1999 and released their first EP in 2002. They would go on to release a pair of studio albums in 2006 and 2009 titled Fix Me and Masterpiece Theater, respectively, and they were seeing some major commercial success over in Canada. Their debut single Save Me from that first album hit number three on the Canadian charts, and Masterpiece Theater would reach the top four on the charts and even go double platinum. While they haven't seen as much chart success here in the United States, that hasn't stopped them from achieving a pretty sizable fan base. The group has over 900,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. That might not seem too high to some, but as someone with a YouTube channel that has a subscriber count in the triple digits, that number looks pretty good to me. Now, I'll admit, I didn't know who Marianas Trench was until 2019. If you said the words Marianas Trench to me before that, I'd ask you if you were referring to the body of water in the Pacific Ocean that is the deepest ocean trench on Earth. In 2019, though, when I was was first breaking into doing YouTube reviews and was still doing reactions, woof. I received a request to look at the group's latest album, Phantoms. At the time, because I wasn't quite as busy with these videos as I thought I'd be or would end up being, I took the request and listened to the album. I found it to be pretty okay, and while I wasn't blown away, it had some amazing highlights that I still come back to today. Echoes of You is an absolute bop, might I add. However, I was pretty blown away by the reach that video had. It's still one of my most viewed videos on this channel, and it got a pretty positive reaction from a lot of fans. I imagine quite a few of you who watch me might have come here from that video, and if so, I appreciate the love that you showed to that review. I'll also say that many of the comments in that video offered up recommendations of their other projects and songs to listen to, essentially all of them, and I made sure to keep that in mind when I was making my list of 2011 albums that I wanted to talk about for this series. Thus, I was excited to dive back into their previous work to see if it landed more than Phantoms did and thankfully it sure did. This album is 12 tracks and 54 minutes of pure bliss and fun that pretty much never feels like it stales out. And it's one of the most fun experiences I had listening to an album new or old this entire year. I haven't had much time to think about my favorite albums from 2011 because I feel like I've given out a lot of excellent ratings to 2011 records, but I can say with confidence this would definitely be high up on my list. Before I go track for track though, I want to make note of the album's storyline. Yes, this is a loose concept album telling a story where Josh Ramsey plays our protagonist. He meets an exiled king of Toyland and agrees to find his daughter Porcelain, whose heart was stolen by Queen Carolina, the king's wife, and locked in a box. Carolina fails to bribe him into ruling Toyland with her, and Josh finds Porcelain only to learn that she isn't actually a toy. We eventually learn from the stuttering wise man, who is actually the exiled king's brother, that Porcelain was adopted as a lost child arriving at the castle and is actually from Josh his homeland. Josh, the king, Porcelain, the stuttering wise man, and several soldiers battle and overthrow the queen, though it comes at the cost of the stuttering wise man's life. Josh and Porcelain find that their old home no longer feels like home, and they return to the castle to live happily ever after. That's all what I learned from Wikipedia. This isn't a knock on the album, but because this is a loose concept album, while listening I didn't feel like that narrative was the most front and center part of it, probably saved for the music videos. It's totally possible to get through this album without realizing there was a narrative. That's not a bad thing though because the story does work upon deeper inspection and the tracks themselves still serve as good standalone listens without that. Sometimes I think that can be a worrying pratfall of a concept album. You always wonder how the tracks will play on their own independent from the concept, but thankfully this works with and without it. The title track Ever After kicks off the album as a six and a half minute cut introducing the characters in the aforementioned story. It begins with very delicate passages that make it feel very mellow, before transitioning tastefully into something much heavier with bigger guitars. Josh's vocals are wildly passionate and emotional as you can hear the way his voice cracks as he sings. Then there's this massive beat switch changing the song into an extremely theatrical but beautiful and epic piece of symphonic rock. Even at six minutes, it's so fantastically paced that it stays exciting the whole way. It's amazing, what a way to open an album. Haven't had enough follows up with a track that does feel a bit ingrained in some of the electronic sounds that dominated pop music in the early 2010s. There are some 
some good implementations of guitars though to make it feel pretty unique to what was going on at the time. It's like mixing some pop rock with funk alongside the modern electronic influence. It's a really cute song that's just super smooth and fun, aided by a very bouncy and extremely likable vocal performance by Josh. By now starts off feeling like a very mellow downbeat song and while it stays pretty down tempo it ends up getting a bit heavier with some bigger more vibrant jumps. It's another song that has this airy pop rock feel being easy to want to dance to but also suitably emotional as well. I think Josh also drops an extremely memorable vocal performance here tied together with one of my personal favorite choruses on the record. Truth or Dare is a track that sonically I can't believe wasn't given a single release or big radio push in the past because I think a lot of this feels like it could have belonged on the radio. The bang beat almost feels like a four on the floor kind of song and Josh's vocals? Yeah, listen to these and tell me he's not trying to do a Michael Jackson impression. There are so many moments where you can just hear the Michael in his voice. That's not a bad thing though because it makes this the kind of song that's just so lighthearted and fun. I can see myself coming back to this a lot. It's really good. Desperate Measures is a guitar lace cut with another four on the floor style beat and an extremely sunny feel. Josh definitely has a lot of fun with his vocals and it gives this song an extra bit of character. The chorus didn't initially grab me when I first heard it but it really grew on me as I continued listening and it was a reminder of why this album works so well because Josh is just not afraid to let a song have fun with itself. Concept album or not, this is just fun music. It's well crafted, well performed, very enjoyable stuff and it works. Porcelain is an incredibly spacey and downcast kind of song building itself up as something of a ballad. It's a slower track with these light pianos and guitars that later builds into something a little heavier around the halfway mark. It nevertheless remains an emotional pop rock track that serves as a vocal powerhouse for Josh Ramsey. I'm not surprised he can handle something like this because I greatly enjoyed his solo track We Can Be Friends which is a simple acoustic ballad. But if you needed another reminder of how well he can do with something more emotional, here it is. Fallout begins with a bit of a creepy feel before moving into something with a little more sunniness to it. It's another poppy, soft rock styled song that once again sees Josh giving another showcase of his emotional vocals. He wears a lot of those emotions on his sleeve with his voice cracks and I feel like his personality can really lift a lot of these songs even higher than they would have gone with another vocalist. Stutter really adds more to the lighthearted feel of the song with a groovy old school bass line and a bouncy clapping beat that, and I promise I'm not saying this in a bad way, sounds like it could be part of the soundtrack of a Disney Channel original movie. I honestly love that vibe as silly as it might be to some. I think it's another example of the album having fun with itself and having a lot of character. Josh sounds great, I still hear a bit of Michael Jackson in his vocals, which I like, though I'm not all that crazy about the hook, and I think it sadly holds the song back a bit more than I thought it would. It's probably the only track on here I wouldn't consider a favorite, though I definitely don't think it's skip worthy. That said, Toy Soldiers has one of my favorite instrumentals on the entire record. Everything about it feels like it belongs in a video game. What with the lighter, more 8-bit moments to the points where it builds itself around those moments, I totally see this belonging in a game. Even the parts where it speeds up a bunch almost feel like a player character getting a power-up of some kind. Josh's vocals fit perfectly for the sound, and while the chorus is built on a repetitive structure, I think Josh sounds strong enough to keep it interesting. Also, the beat switch makes it great too. I also think the writing is interesting as Josh wrote this in response to an aggressive letter he received from a fan and makes this song as almost a commentary on rabid obsession with celebrities. Initially, I thought this would be my absolute favorite on the album, but more on that later. As if Toy Soldiers didn't sound enough like a video game, B-Team builds on those sounds to feel like something of a sequel to that cut. It's another song that honestly feels like it could have gotten a radio push and been successful. Man, it blows my mind that these guys aren't massive commercial successes here in the US. They have the sound for it, their music is quality, and it fits for radio here. Ah well, at least they're more successful back in Canada. Anyway, this track also has one of my favorite hooks on the album, and Josh continues to have plenty of fun with his vocals. So soon runs away from the bustling, joyous sounds of the last two tracks in favor of something more ballad-driven. Honestly, I could listen to Josh sing all day, so even for a relatively long track at just under six minutes, hearing Josh sing over a piano is just what I need. I will agree with a sentiment I've heard that asking why can't you just be lonely does sound pretty toxic, but I think Josh's conviction and moments of self-awareness make this song extremely memorable. There's plenty of palpable emotion to his vocals as well, making this unbelievably memorable. Just two tracks later, this overtook Toy Soldiers as my absolute favorite on the album. What a beautiful song. And No Place Like Home is a classic Marianas Trench outro. Over six and a half minutes long, culminating the entire album and building itself up to where it's huge and cinematic. The first minute is this acapella vocal passage with filter laced vocals, and then it moves into another four on the floor style beat with what sounds like a banjo plucking in the background. Yeah, the song mixes guitars with a banjo and it's 
sounds awesome. Speaking of guitars, it then transitions into something much heavier with these gigantic riffs, and then it takes on a vibe that feels reminiscent of something theatrical. I don't know why, but the plucky strings and pianos give me some Queen vibes. The song moves between styles that feel heavenly, vibrant, and at times even a bit creepy. Even with all these stylistic switch-ups, though, it never feels jarring. Every element in transition makes sense, and Josh owns every bit of the song with impeccable vocals. This is how you close an album. What a wonderful job. Overall, Marianas Trench's 2011 album is a record I had such an amazing time with. This is just pop rock bliss right here. The concept and story, while implemented more deeply in the music videos than in the actual songs, is pretty interesting, and I actually like that it's saved for the videos. It makes the album feel a bit more gratifying in that the songs can be enjoyed together or on their own, which allows it to avoid a major pratfall some concept albums can fall into. Beyond that though, the production is extremely varied and wildly creative, and even if this is a pop-leaning album, it never feels like it's trying to jump on a trend or do something halfway. It also helps that Josh Ramsey is a fantastic vocalist who can elevate a lot of the instrumentals here with very dramatic, emotional, and charismatic performances. Best of all, like I said several times, this album is just too damn fun. It's nice when a record knows how to be fun and have fun with itself, and that's what this album does. It takes its charming, lovable soundscape and remembers to enjoy itself with that. It makes for an album that twists and turns at every corner, but is all the better for it. I'm glad I got to explore a part of the group's back catalog, and I can't wait to hear more. Back in 2011, the only Marianas Trench I knew of was The Body of Water, so I don't even know what I would have thought of this band. Listening to it now, damn, I love this album. If I had to put it on my scale, I can confidently give it an excellent rating. Fantastic album, I can tell this is gonna get a lot of replays out of me. But that's just my opinion on this album. What did you guys think about it? Did you listen to it back in 2011? Do you still listen to it now? Did you love it back then? Hate it back then? Do you still love it now? Do you still hate it now? Are you just completely indifferent towards it? And what is your favorite Marianas Trench album? Whatever your thoughts and experiences are, leave them down in the comments below. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that I have linked in the description, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. And my next 10 years later video is going to be the last one of 2021. I can't believe it either. We've reached the last proper episode of 10 years later for 2021. And the last project that I'm going to be talking about is The Weeknd's Echoes of Silence. Very happy I get to end off the year with that one. So stay tuned for that. But until then, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Peace.